On this week's episode, would you go speed dating on an airplane where one airline is actually making that possible? Also, apple pie and Pepsi, the perfect Thanksgiving combination. And can video games help your kids become baby geniuses? How much playtime can actually benefit your little ones? Thanks again for joining in another episode of Anchors Away. I am Robert Burns, along with Sarah Threadgill on the other line, former TV news anchors, giving you news to know and get you through the weekend. Subscribe for free wherever you listen to podcasts. This is something that uh, is now approaching the holidays, and I only have to visit like three or four people this year because you can't go see a whole lot of family members. Sarah, are you guys, I mean, you kind of live with your family, so you're, you're <laughs> stuck with the whole group. Yes. Yes. We live with my husband's parents right now as we're transitioning to moving to another state. And, uh, I imagine we'll do Thanksgiving with his parents, but you know, we, we also have a lot of extended family in the Austin area. So mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to be able to see him this year. I think it's going to have to be a, a zoom kind of Thanksgiving, which zoom did say they are going to get rid of their time limit, I yeah. guess, for the Thanksgiving week. I saw that. And, and the normal time limit for Zoom calls is, I think, 40, 45 minutes, something like that. And so they say, the Zoom says that they will stop the limits on that for Thanksgiving Day from like midnight until 6 a.m. Black Friday, which is fine. It's great. You know what the first thought I had was? Who the hell are you talking to for more than 40 minutes on Zoom when it comes to family members? I'm good for 10 minutes on the phone. Hey, Graham. Hey, Pop. Happy Thanksgiving. What are you eating? Everything's good. Okay, talk to you later. See you at holidays for Christmas. That's about it. What are we talking about for 40 minutes? A lot of families do otherwise. I'll tell you, when when COVID first kind of hit and and the the first round of isolating began, um, we would do a Saturday evening Zoom call with my husband's extended family, and there would be about 20 of us on the Zoom call, and um, everybody would, you know, bring their cocktail or their beer, and we'd all just sit around and chit chat, and uh, we'd do it for about an hour or so. So, um, no, I, I think I think families are actually utilizing it. I'm, I'm curious. I, I mean. I know my family, we'd all be talking over each other. It would be like that delayed phone call from, you know, across the country back when video calls were brand new, you'd start talking over each other. That's probably how it would go with my family at that point, especially after a couple drinks kick in. It's probably how it goes for most families, I'd imagine. Yes, a lot of talking over each other, especially coming from a big um, Italian family. You know, a lot of hand gesturing, too. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of hand gesturing that gets cut off in the screen. As as most of you don't know, I am a hand-talking person, so when I'm talking to Sarah uh, on on Skype is what we use, she sees, like, my hand come in half the frame and then come out of half the frame. I look up her nose, and so that's how it's even for the most part (laughs) on how this works. I apologize for that. We'll have to fix my angle. You're not sorry at all. But let's talk a little bit about one thing that I find find interesting one of the news uh pieces that i found out there earlier this week uh for the holiday do you have like a favorite holiday food or thanksgiving let me say thanksgiving food no there's a dessert that my family on my parents side makes um it's called the pink stuff <laughs> okay. <I don't>... <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's... It's Real creative on that name. It's yep, the name, the pink stuff. But uh, it's my favorite, and it only comes out at Thanksgiving. So, you know, that's what I look forward to each year. But the rest, is, I mean, the rest of the stuff is very common. But turkey, turkey is a must-have. Turkey is a must-have. You got your signs out there. I, I know Thanksgiving usually in my family around the time when the eggnog starts coming out. Maybe some coffee, some Baileys. I don't really. I mean, I'll do iced tea. You know, while I'm eating my meal or water for the most part. I don't do soda. In general, so very southern of you that I see. I, I don't. I, I mean, I'll, I'll drink my tea all day long. I'll drink my tea and my Arnold Palmer, my lemonade uh, mixed in, but I won't drink soda. And so this doesn't excite me. My sister is a huge Pepsi lover, though. She will drink Pepsi and keep their business going throughout the pandemic. But Pepsi is now for the holidays introducing a limited edition apple pie flavored Pepsi. They're gearing up for the holidays. 
Uh, and this new apple pie flavored soda will only be available through a sweepstakes. So you got to really like Pepsi and really want to have an apple pie flavored soda. Yeah, it's um, it's actually a, a, they'll be doing a giveaway and you can win two liter bottles of Pepsi apple pie to 1500 winners. So 1500 lucky people get to uh, take part of this. But I just, it does not appeal to me at all. Mm-hmm. Number one, I'm not the biggest Pepsi fan. Um, I'm the, you know, Texas Dr. Pepper girl, but uh, just something about the sound of apple pie Mm-mm. and Pepsi mm-hmm. mixed together does not sound appetizing no, or appealing. I'm- Right there with you. I am not a Pepsi fan. I'm a Coke guy if I have to have one. I like a little bit more carbonation. Pepsi feels like it has a little bit more uh, syrupy flavor to it. I guess that's my reasoning. But I know, like I said, my sister would be all about Pepsi and cherry flavored. Okay, I get it. But this new flavor, you can't get it in stores. At least not yet. They might at some point. Um, But if you want to take part in this sweepstakes, because when I think of sweepstakes, I think of a one, two liter bottle of Pepsi. That's what I want to enter in. Um, But you have to use the hashtag Pepsi Apple Pie Challenge. Uh, There's, you know, you got to submit a photo. There's rules and all that stuff. We'll have the link in our show notes. But um, I I have no desire to try this. I am not that exotic when it comes to my sodas. I am an orange, sun-kissed only if I drink it. Or I guess I'll have a sip of something else, any of the other ones other than Pepsi? I mean, I don't do Dr. Pepper as much as you, as you people do. As, as y'all do. As y'all as do, y'all. yes. <laughs> so this says it has hints, hints of cinnamon and apple that mimic the taste uh, of a slice of oh, apple pie. So, you know, I'd give it a go, but um, don't see this one being being a favorite for many people. So, um, you know, I'd love, I'd love to hear from anybody that actually won this sweepstakes, you know, catch us on social media. Let us know how it tastes. I'd love to hear from anybody who wants to enter the damn sweepstakes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, what are you going to do with a two liter? You bring a two liter bottle of Pepsi that you won in a sweepstakes to your 25, 10 person Thanksgiving dinner and enjoy it with the rest of them. No, if I win that, I'm keeping that stuff all to myself. I would not be sharing it, but I would also, I wonder if you added a little rum to it. Maybe. Ooh. Now you're combining flavors. Now, now you're thinking probably like the Pepsi executives thought in the first place. Yeah, yeah. A little how, can we, mix. how can we booze up uh, Aunt Lisa and, and Uncle Mike and the rest of them and see how this holiday goes at that point? <laughs> uh, but regardless, you want to add the sweepstakes? That, that's your call. You do it. You win your Pepsi and you let us know how the heck it tastes. So I don't know if you've heard this. And it makes me really jealous and sad that I'm not George Clooney's friend. But apparently, Mr. George took about $14 million of his own cash and gave it away to his friends. So a million dollars in cash for 14 different friends. He calls his friends the boys, fondly calls them the boys, and just wanted to thank them for sticking by him in his career as it got off the ground. And uh, so he took some money from his hit movie, Gravity. I don't know if you watched it. But I did. It, I did. it was not bad. I mean, Sandra It had Bullock. me on the edge of my seat the entire movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. $720 million at the box office, that movie. So obviously gave him a little bit of extra money. Took some of that and uh, decided to to pay it forward to some of his besties. So, uh, God, I wish I could have been one. Well, I mean, he's got to be using his gravity money because clearly it's not the Batman three or, or he was Batman <laughs> four. Uh, clearly it wasn't that money because that movie only made about $16 at the theaters. Uh, I probably paid about six of it, but you're right. I mean, I don't know. I don't have any friends with that. Kind. I have friends with money, but none that would just give me a million dollars. None that I'm no. that cool with. And I don't even have friends that I would give a million dollars to. I don't have family I'd give a million dollars to. Rather alone George Clooney handing out $14 million to his boyfriends. Uh, I say that with a space, so there's no confusion. He is still his George dudes, Clooney. Bros. Yeah, his dudes. So yeah. generous of him. Um, yeah. What do you think he's the reaction was? His when he was broke and they loaned him money and he's just been trying to think of a way basically that he could pay him back. And he did this though in a pretty dramatic way. Of course, George Clooney is a jokester. We've seen him pull pranks on Brad Pitt and, and others. So he uh, found a business in downtown LA 
and uh, drove up a beat up florist van to a secret location and um, put in, I guess, 14 bags of, of cash, but they were $20 bills. So, you know, imagine him pulling up with this bag, handing it to you, and it's got $20 bills equaling a million dollars. So, uh, I don't know. Just just typical George Clooney. Pretty funny. That sounds very mafia-ish, too. Putting all the cash and small <laughs> unmarked bills in a bag, take you exactly. out to a secluded area, and then hand you said bag and say, yeah. here, don't deposit it all in once, or I will in a consider shady you van. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. I, like I said, I think it's neat. I don't know of anyone. Like I, the running joke in my family is like, look, if I win even one million dollars, you ain't seeing me for a while. Let alone giving somebody a million dollars. But he's got that George Clooney money, so he does. Uh, and you know, George Clooney swagger and George uh-huh. Clooney good looks, and you know, all the good George Clooney stuff. He's got a solid beard right now. As he well, does, so. and, you know, and that's a big thing too. Too with COVID beards, I think he, he does have a COVID beard. Absolutely, he, COVID. he does. Um, let's move on to another story. This is pretty interesting to me because uh, obviously you have kids, I don't. And as I'm looking at uh, some of these articles out here, there there was one that kind of stuck with me, and you and I were joking about this. And the headline runs that you know studies are now showing that about four hours of video games a day can be beneficial for your mental health. Now, this is a research uh, research study conducted from Oxford University, smart brains over there. Uh, they found that playing four hours of video games every day is good for your brain and how you're feeling. It focused on people playing Nintendo's Animal Crossing and Plants vs. Zombies, you know, a little shooter game uh, from EA Sports, and they found that people who played more games tended to report greater well-being. Uh, now, the research only looked at the two all-ages games. They didn't look at, like, the really hardcore shooter-upper games. They didn't look at, you know, people who played Madden for four hours. Probably going to dummy up a little bit if you play Madden for four hours. But researchers still say that uh, anyone who played four hours of Animal Crossing was a happier human being. Now, Sarah... You have little ones. It did not mention anything about the game Fortnite. <laughs> we are in Fortnite mode at our house. So we uh, we got it about two months ago. And um, we started off last Christmas. They got the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they were three and five. And I still thought that was a little early for you know, getting into the Nintendo thing, but it was Mario um, Odyssey. So, you know, it was a very generic game. And then we've kind of like stepped it up and and, and they've gotten really into it. And so now we're into Fortnite and it is kind of a shoot 'em up movie, but it's more strategy. It's kind of like, you know, you start off with a hundred people and who Mm -hmm. ends up at the very end. Um, And then they do have guns in it, but there's no like blood and guts or anything. But yeah, I, I often wonder... (laughs) <laughs> what kind of damage it's doing to my kids' brains. <laughs> Apparently it's not. Apparently it's okay. building up their brains. You're going to have kids that are going to be, you know, high-paid city planners and engineers and, and, and stuff like that. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here playing Madden and Spider-Man, just dumbing myself up at 36 years old. And uh, I also don't play four hours. I can't. I can't play four hours on video games. I can't do it. I, I go nuts. I can't do anything. No. But, you know, right now my kids, unfortunately, I mean, they're doing virtual school. So we do that in the morning. Mm-hmm. And by two o'clock in the afternoon, you know, we're done with school. Can't really go to the parks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of the parks here in the central Texas area are still closed. Can't, you know, take them to an arcade. Um, some people are putting their kids in sports. We opted not to. So Mm -hmm. we're not doing T-ball, baseball, soccer, any of that right now. Uh, so we're just kind of, you know, stuck inside a lot and that's been a saving grace in a way. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes me feel better to know this, to, to read the study because, uh, I know we've been playing (laughs) a lot more than we probably should, but it's just, it's, it's all, I just blame COVID for everything. Yeah. I think that's the de facto thing is just to blame COVID for all of it, but you know, there's going to to be some older kids out there who are going to see this study and say, hey, mom, look, it's OK. There's a study that says that my mental health is really what I'm focusing on right now. So I need you to step off and homework will be up next. There's going to be some exactly. kids trying to take advantage of this. Exactly. Well, my oldest today, six years old, told me, mom, you just need to chillax. Huh. I'm like, well, yep, 
Yep, I was told to chillax today. So apparently this is chillaxing him playing these games. So whatever works, right? Whatever keeps him quiet and out of your hair for a little bit. All right, we do want to thank our sponsor for this show, Anchor. It's the easiest way for us to bring you the podcast. They give us everything we need. It's all in one place. And most importantly, it's all free. Everything on our iPhones, on our iPads, on our computers, all the creation tools to edit, it's all included, and they distribute the show for us. Send it to Spotify, send it to Apple, send it to Google. So you can start your own podcast, get in on the game, download the Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Uh, Just a little bit, yeah. All right, the next story is, uh, I think it's pretty funny, but it also deserves a before song. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. All right, so um, considering the knowing the details of this story, that song's actually eerily accurate. Perfectly accurate. Exactly. Yeah, it's a three hour airplane ride. This is a Taiwanese airline called EVA Air or EVA Air, and they have just launched a speed dating event for singles and 20 men, 20 women board a plane. They take a three hour tour, a three hour ride. Uh, just over the areas of Taiwan and land back where they started. And during that time, you know, they get to to know each other kind of, I I don't think necessarily like speed dating, but just getting time to talk to each other. I think they even get some meals prepared from uh, Michelin star chef uh, Nakamura. So sounds like an amazing three hours in the air. And uh, who knows, they might walk away with the love of their life. I I know that it's just three days. I think it's Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. So I feel like that would be the uh, perfect New Year's. That would be the perfect New Year's thing. Maybe not a Christmas thing, but it might be more of an idea like a party situation. A New Year's, you get up, you get on the plane, you have a couple of drinks, you get off, you keep the New Year's party going with whoever you may or may not have met. I don't know how those things work. Great idea. Yeah, apparently it's a pretty popular idea. So the first flight sold out within a week, and uh, they're looking for people between the ages of 28 and 38 for men and women 24 to 35 for women. And uh, get this, you have to have a university degree to do this, as well as a Taiwanese (laughs) citizenship. (laughs) Uh, Isn't this the same area? And it might not be. I know somewhere... Uh, in, in, in Asia, they had, um, where they would let you come on the plane when the pandemic first started to kind of ease up a little bit and you could just sit on the plane. It was the flight to nowhere is what it was called. So you bought a plane ticket and you just sat there and they came out and they brought you peanuts or whatever the hell they did. And it, it made it feel like it was a plane. So you felt like you were going somewhere and it, it, it's making me think we just need, we just need something to somewhere to go. We're just, we're we just over it. We just, we just got to go somewhere. Get the hell out of here. That was, you know, a topic with some friends the other night is what, what would be the first thing that you would do? You know, what will be the first thing you will do once this is all over since they now apparently have a, uh, you know, a vaccine for it. To me, I miss traveling. I miss going mm-hmm. somewhere. I miss, uh, I mean, we're, we're supposed to be moving across the country and we're having to stay put. So, um, <laughs> you know, when it's time to go house hunting, we can't even get on the plane really and go. I mean, I know people are flying and people are taking that risk, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get out of here and travel a little bit. This costs two hundred ninety-five dollars a person. I'm guessing maybe they still have a few open, open seats, but uh, I, I, I still gotta find like, my way. I still gotta find my way there. So I gotta get a Taiwanese citizen. So and I, I need to work on that, out, that quick but, citizenship. Uh, yeah, um, who knows? Maybe maybe Delta or Southwest will pick up on the game. It sounds like it could be something really interesting. Have you ever done uh, in your single days? Had you ever done those speed dating things or anything like that? No, no. But I mean, I feel like as a news reporter out in the field, it's almost like speed dating. Every day is speed dating for a, for a woman. Doing speed dating news, because yeah. you're you you know you're out of the scene and I remember you know meeting a, a police officer and 
he asked the, you know, public information lady to give me his number. I mean, you know, it's kind of like a very, you know, you're out at a scene at a murder. <laughs> Someone wants to slip you their business you. card and chat you it's up a little that bit. That speed dating vibe where you're like, hi, how are you? Okay, now I'm going to get back mm-hmm. to work. So, mm-hmm. uh, no, but I haven't done the official speed dating. I did not back in my dating days. I did. did you? I did. I actually, I went with, I didn't go there for me. I went with a friend. He wanted to go, didn't want to go by himself. I'm like, what the hell? I don't care. I was 20 something years old. And so we went to this bar in in Fort Lauderdale and we did the speed dating thing. And it's really, it's weird. It's not horrible because if you, you know, right, you know, within the first minute or two, you can't stand the person, you know, let's just move along here. Let's, Let's just not see each other anymore. So you can just go to the table to the left. So it's not horrible. It's just awkward. You, you, you always know there's a clock in the back if you um, if you end up talking with someone that you like, you're waiting to you know for the whole thing to be over because you only get one shot at it. Um, so I don't know how it works on a plane because it's not like an airplane you can get up and walk seats. around. It's, that's really not uh, something that you're supposed to do is walk around or go from aisle to aisle after you talk with someone. Um, so I'm kind of curious to know how they are going to implement all of that stuff. But uh, speed dating sucks overall, though. Uh, and I would imagine being in an enclosed area where you can't even escape the other person, or if you have to go to the bathroom, you have to use the airplane bathroom. That would suck even more. That would. But it says that they are seated, they'll be seated two by two, and depending on a, just a lucky draw, mm-hmm. and that they are encouraged to mix and mingle with those in other rows. They'll be munching on dishes prepared by a Michelin star chef. And uh, obviously, because of COVID, you know, keeping the mask on when they're not eating or drinking. So that's tricky, too, in itself, because you can't really see the you person. See, you're... You can't no. tell if they got bad breath, bad teeth. Teeth are totally a deal breaker if I'm going out and I'm speed dating with you. And you got that dead tooth or that missing spot. I'm just I'm already checked out. I'm done. Well, it appears here you would never, maybe even know, but nope. maybe they have beautiful eyes. Yes, and a great personality, and they love football on Sundays, too, I'm sure. <laughs> and they're on a plane on New Year's Day. And they're on a plane in the same crappy boat as here. you. Yes, exactly, and you can't go anywhere from there. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I would do it. And, uh, funny thing is I think speed dating was, you know, the actual one. It's probably close to a hundred bucks. So it's about the same thing. You're just going up in the air. Um, all right. So that would be about it. I don't have any grievances to file. It is, uh, Thanksgiving week after all, because uh, I don't know if we're going to punch out an episode for Thanksgiving next week. Uh, we may, uh, but regardless, we'll just talk about more food stuff then. So in the meantime, you know what to do. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Share us with your friends. We appreciate everybody helping us out with this little side project of ours to scratch that itch of uh, not having to put makeup on or do our hair or be on the news, uh, but still kind of do the news. Exactly. It's it's a nice itch to scratch. It's it's. Uh... I have fun every week looking for things to talk about. So if you ever have anything, just find me on social media. I, I would love some ideas from from listeners. Throw out the pages. Uh, Sarah Threadgill Media for Facebook and then Sarah Threadgill News on Instagram. And I am Robert Burns TV on all the socials. Interact with us. We're real people. We want to talk with you. We want to hang out with you. And we will talk to you this way next week. See you, Sarah. Have a good one.